closer with you. For many of us, it's the new year, our first time worshiping this year, although we were here last Sunday, my brother, and a uh, reminder of the beauty that we have in Jesus. And appropriately, uh, we're celebrating the baptism of Jesus. That's where we see a uh, new member in Perry, my head, called the blessing, right? And uh, also, uh, we're receiving our uh, new officers today. They make a pledge to be faithful and fulfilling the responsibilities in the congregation. So, a great Sunday to be here. And may God bless your worship this morning. And peace of the Lord be with you.
This is your great salvation. This time is our pleasure to receive Carrie Montez as our member. Come forward. Beloved in the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil and all his works and his ways? I do. Do you believe in God the Father, the Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be in the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from them and confess in a small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Yes, I do. do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Yes, I do. do you desire to become a member of this congregation? Yes, sir. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? Upon this your confession, I acknowledge you publicly that you are a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Invite the congregation to stand and pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, enabling them both, enabling Carrie, rather, uh, with the heart to believe and with her mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit, she may continue steadfast in the one true faith and the fellowship of this congregation. As together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Welcome. All right. okay. We continue with our confession of sins and absolution, divine service, Setting 1, page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, we deceive our just. will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we delight in your will, and walk your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold my servant, whom I, am of whom I uphold. I will tell of the decree. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage. You shall break them with a rod of iron. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Serve the Lord with fear. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory. 
glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For God have Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and are inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the, over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was even a God. We speak Psalm twenty nine responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. May the Lord give strength to his people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The epistle reading was taken from Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. What shall, we, what shall I say? When shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know what all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of, of the Father. You, we too may live a new life, for if we have been united with him in a, in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a, res, in a resurrection like his, like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because everyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that sin, Christ, was raised from the dead. He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The dead, he died. He died to sin once for all. But the life, for, the life he lives, he lives for God in the same way. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven begin, being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May be seated for the children's message at home. We're going to talk about this in Sunday school, by the way, to your baptism. And if you see uh, what I have here, this is, oh, I flipped over. Mr. Fanuki didn't want, like one of the pictures in this calendar here. I have, so he blocked it out. <laughs> Actually, I know the person. Uh, this is uh, a calendar, of course. And uh, a calendar marks the beginning. We're beginning of a new year. It's January, and some people uh, make some New Year's resolutions to start the new year out afresh, and uh, maybe you made some New Year's resolutions. Break some bad habits, or uh, maybe give up some things, or add some things to your life. 
But the thing about New Year's resolutions is they're very difficult to keep, right? And uh, we need a new beginning, a fresh start all the time. And that's what baptism does for us. When you are baptized into Jesus Christ, most of you at this very font at Messiah, uh, you are given a new beginning, a fresh start. God's forgiveness and grace, a, a clean slate to start all over again. And baptism just isn't a one-time event, but it is a daily event throughout our lives that we've been given a new beginning, a fresh start in Jesus uh, who died on the cross for our sins and made it possible through the means of grace of baptism and his word and later on when you're older to take Holy Communion to receive that forgiveness. And so I want to remind you that you always have a fresh start in Jesus when you flub up and mess up, uh, not to sin, any more, sin more, but to say, you know what, I'm a child of God, and I'm a child of God, and because of that, I have the Holy Spirit working through me, and I want to let Jesus' light shine in my life as evidence of that new beginning I've been given in Jesus. So pray with me uh, about a new life in Jesus, and ask the adults to pray with me as well. Dear God, we thank you that Jesus, who is without sin, washes away our sin and gives us a new life in baptism. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with our sermon hymn. I forgot my notes upstairs, so I'm going to get those uh, in the meantime. So I'll be back. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text is taken from our Gospel reading, which was just read, and the reading from the latter verse, verses, verses 10 and 11. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Here ends a portion of our text. So we're 10 days into the new year, 
And the question I have for you is, have you broken any of your New Year's resolutions yet? Or are you still going strong? Whether you happen to have made New Year's resolutions for this New Year 2021 or not, this side of heaven, all of us are in need of improvement. All of us are in need of resolving our, and amending our sinful lives. For as Romans 3.23 tells us, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When we examine our lives in the light of God's holy word, it soon becomes apparent just how sinful we really are. As Isaiah 53, 6 tells us, we all like sheep have gone astray. And our need of improving our love for God and our love for our neighbors. Hence, we can easily relate to Isaiah when his spiritual eyes got a glimpse of God's holiness and he cried out, woe is me, for I am undone. And the Apostle Paul, when he describes his struggle with his sinful nature in Romans chapter 7 by saying, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Perhaps that's why New Year's resolutions are so appealing to imperfect people like you and me, while at the same time are easier made than kept. For a new year can represent to us a new beginning, and to carry out the words found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, to forget what behinds and strain towards what is ahead. But realistically, January 1st is just another day on the calendar. and offers us no power or strength for us to go and sin no more by amending our sinful ways and bad habits. But there is something that does give us a fresh start, that is the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit behind it, along with the promises of God's word attached to it. And that is our baptism. For there is something that does that. For just as Jesus began his earthly ministry in our text, by identifying himself with sinners like you and me, so in our baptisms, we have been identified with Jesus Christ and given a new beginning. Baptism, as I mentioned in the children's sermon, is not just to be a one-time event in our lives and looked upon as merely a christening on par with naming a ship or a quaint custom, but it's to be an event that is to be celebrated each and every day of our lives. As Luther's small catechism reminds us, baptism indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, that a new man should daily emerge and live before God in righteousness and purity forever. All of us know our birthdays when we mark another year growing older. But I wonder how many of us know the day when we were baptized in Christ's death and resurrection, born again through the water and the Spirit, and given a new beginning in Christ, recreated for good works, which God prepared us in advance for us to do when he formed us in our mother's wombs. And just as the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters when he created the heavens and the earth, the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters of our baptisms when we were recreated into the image of God. Which is why along with our birthdays and anniversary dates, we publish our baptism anniversaries in our church newsletter, The Messiah Matters. But whether you remember your baptismal date or not. As a baptized member of God's family, you have been given all the rights and privileges as one of his beloved children. Forgiveness, salvation, eternal life in heaven, along with all those seemingly too good to be true promises found in God's word that are yours to, pro to uh, claim in your life as yes and amen in Jesus Christ. In fact, if you ever do a study in your Bibles of the words in Christ, through Christ, and of Christ, you'll soon discover just how awesome an event your baptism was in spite of its ordinary appearance. When an ordinary pastor like myself applied water to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, just as the heavens were open at the baptism of Jesus, so the promises of heaven have been made available to you in your baptism. But unfortunately, due to the plethora of Reformed teachings 
we've been exposed to that place human reasoning, reasoning over God's word regarding baptism. We tend to downplay the significance of baptism in our daily lives. My girlfriend in college was Baptist, and one summer she did missionary work for Greater European Mission, or GEM, and she told me how shocked she was to come across so many Lutherans who hardly ever attended church. And yet, when she would try to witness to them, they would customarily respond, I've been baptized. For somehow these German Lutherans failed to comprehend that the gift of our baptism is to be a daily part of our lives and not just a one-time event. That our baptismal faith is to be regularly nourished by remembering the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, by holding God's word sacred and, and gladly hearing and learning it, and by often receiving Holy Communion as you are doing today. As the saying goes, seven days makes one week, W-E-E-K, so seven days without worship makes one week, W-E-A-K. One of the more effective ways we can use in keeping our New Year's resolutions is by using positive affirmations, where we will, people will try to affirm themselves the particular traits they desire to have in their lives. For example, if you're hoping to improve your health, rather than putting yourself down and saying, I'm nothing just but a lazy, out of shape bum, that's just the way I am, to instead affirm yourselves the traits of a healthy person who takes good care of the physical temple that God has given you, and not just with mere words, but visually and emotionally as well. Sometimes people even cut out pictures in magazines and make a collage of the people they wish to be like on the refrigerators. As they more and more identify themselves with the positive traits they're trying to develop in their lives, to the point when they fail to live up to their trait, those traits, for example, when they pig out and become a couch potato all day long, it causes them to think, hey, I'm not acting like myself. That's not like me. As slowly and surely their negative traits become less and less a part of their lifestyle and identity, and more and more their identity changes into the person they desire to become. Friends in Christ, how much more are we to do the same on a daily basis? Who have been assured, who have been assured by God himself in his word of our identity as a forgiven, baptized child of God. So that when we give into the temptation of sin, the Holy Spirit works in us to say with sorrow and contrition, hey, that's not the person whom God recreated me to be in Christ. For baptized children of God like myself, don't think, speak, or do such sinful things. And whenever the devil, the accuser, attacks us and mocks us by saying, ha, you call yourself a Christian? Look at you. We can respond by agreeing with our adversary and confessing, yes, you're right. I am a poor, miserable sinner. I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what I have left undone and deserve nothing but God's temporary and eternal wrath and punishment. But, and here's the key, you foul devil, you. I have been baptized into Christ, and because of that, I have been assured that if I confess my sins, God is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And the same Holy Spirit is renewing in me daily into the image of Christ. For he who began a good work in me will bring it to completion until the day of my redemption. Friends in Christ, let us resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to live up to our baptismal identity in Jesus Christ, not just at the beginning of a new year, but every day of our lives. As every day as God's children, as God's children, we hear in our hearts the same words Jesus heard on the day of his baptism, God saying to us, you are my child, with whom I am well pleased. 
as the Holy Spirit works in us both the desire and the ability to do His will. So that rather than being conformed to the image of this sinful world, we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds as both hearers and doers of God's holy word. May 2021 be a year for us at Messiah, a year of renewal and revival as we live out our identities as baptized children of God. As Martin Luther says in his large catechism, a true Christian life is nothing other than a daily baptism, once begun and ever to be continued. For this must be done without ceasing, that we always keep purging away whatever belongs to the old Adam, then what belongs to the new man may come forth. For in the words of 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Amen. Now may the peace of God is past the understanding. Card and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Even in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being the voices of the Father, by whom all were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we uh, remember uh, to pray for the family of Ray Starosta, who uh, passed away this uh, Friday. We also continue to pray for Chuck, who's in hospice care, uh, Heather, who broke her rib, uh, Pat, her husband, who's got COVID. We also pray for Robin, who fell, and others uh, in our bulletins. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have revealed your Son to us in the wonders, wondrous epiphany in the Jordan. So also you have received, revealed your name and blessing to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs. Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise in newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy, preserve your holy church here and scattered throughout the world. Give steadfast faith to all Christians by the preaching of your word and through the holy sacraments and send laborers into your harvest. Enliven the love of your saints to bear one another's burdens and to show mercy towards those outside of the church. Quicken us in the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve the family, especially all Christian homes. Turn husband and wife toward one another in love. Equip fathers and mothers for their holy duty as teachers of the faith and preserve all children in the saving faith and certain promises of their baptism unto life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, preserve our nation, its leaders, and those who serve for the good of our people and for their protection. Grant peace in our time, O Lord, for you alone fight for us. Lord, in your mercy, 
Give comfort and relief to those who are sick, depressed, tired, confused, or in any need. Especially we pray for the family of uh, Chuck Novak. We also pray for Heather, Pat, Robin. Watch over all expected mothers and their children, that they may have a safe delivery and be brought also to the life-giving waters of holy baptism in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Be with those who mourn the death of Ray Starosta, that they may hear your son's words of grace and be confident in their baptism, where you name them your child. Lord, in your mercy. At your invitation, O Father, we come to your supper for, for rest. Preserve us from impenitence and unbelief, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and clothe us with the righteousness purchased with your blood. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you manifested yourself with the Holy Spirit and the fullness of grace at the baptism of your dear Son, and with your voice directed us to him who has borne our sins, that we might receive grace and the remission of sins. Keep us, we beseech you, in the true faith. Since we have been baptized in accordance with your command and the example of your dear Son, we pray you to strengthen our faith by your Holy Spirit and lead us to everlasting life and salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On that note, with the offertory we just sung, we install our congregational officers for this new year. You may be seated. Those uh, who are officers uh, for this year may come forward. And we thank all those who have served this past year. And it's been a unique year in Messiah, and we anticipate uh, a unique year here, uh, the new year, and what God has in store for us as we continue to uh, seek his Holy Spirit, how to minister to our neighbors and connect uh, perhaps virtually and in person as well. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us all that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various officers to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. And so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church, as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this day. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Our officers have been appointed and elected to serve in their positions. You have been chosen to fill specific officers and positions of responsibility at Messiah Lutheran Church. 
You are to work with the pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, that the erring are admonished, and that, this, this, that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, and promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of this congregation, it is especially important that you as office bearers in his church show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the office or offices entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women who have selected to serve as officers of Messiah Lutheran Church here in Chicago. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I install you as officers of Messiah Lutheran Church in Chicago in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices, that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here and in all places, under heaven, the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days, we with all your faithful people may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast and movable and always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your, neighbor, your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Continue with the service of the sacrament, found on page 160. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and solitary, that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. For at his baptism, your voice from heaven revealed him as your beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit descended on him, confirming him to be the Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive this salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This was as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Christ, 
come with the body of Christ and die. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul for life everlasting. Heart and peace. Amen. Christ, your Son, our Lord, who 
lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace.
be seated. And uh, again, we welcome Carrie as our new member. Uh, God bless you. And one of the frustrations of the coronavirus is we don't have fellowship afterwards. So I hope you uh, get to know Carrie uh, better and uh, her grandkids eventually. They come to join us for Sunday school and uh, perhaps her husband will worship with us too sometime. So happy to have her and her family. Um, I really uh, am kind of in a mixed emotions this morning, um, having visited Chuck last night um, in his dying moments, doing combination of the dying. Uh, we became quite, quite close over the years, and um, I know his testimony was very powerful. Uh, some of you may know he had brain cancer before, and uh, they got all the surgery and the wiring, uh, maybe I forgot how many years ago, and I returned uh, within the last year or so. And he's just thankful that he was given the opportunity to serve uh, the children as principal, and um, we pray for him and his family, also uh, a little bit saddened as well by uh, Ray's death. This past week, I got to uh, speak to him on the phone and share the good news of the gospel with him. I know he had a lot of questions, but they're being answered right now in heaven. I drive by Bernice's and Ray's house every day, almost every morning, just like I did today. So uh, remember those saints who have gone before us and uh, how we can uh, witness to others. I've had people ask me often this week and perhaps even more, is, this, is, this, is Jesus coming soon? And uh, all I can say is coming sooner today than yesterday. And uh, if not, he's going to take us to heaven. So. Uh, be prepared and uh, share that good news of the gospel uh, in our neighborhood and uh, with your friends. Uh, invite them to share uh, the gospel online if they can't come here personally. And uh, welcome those who are watching at home. Hopefully our sound is working better. And uh, we want to share that good news of the gospel um, while we can. Let our light so shine. Um, never mind the politics right now. Let's talk about Jesus and the love that he has for us and the love that we have for others. Um, you can get involved in politics, and that becomes a lot of disunity. I know they're speaking the truth in love, uh, but um, the most important thing is shining the light of Jesus in this dark world. Uh, we don't follow man, we follow God. And we don't worship a man, we worship God. So uh, there, I would be, every man is imperfect. Every political system is imperfect. So only the kingdom of God is perfect. And a rant. <laughs> um, we have Bible study uh, going on this week. Uh, Wednesday is our Bible study uh, with, um, I continue my study on Ecclesiastes. If you want to join that, uh, it'll be on Zoom uh, from 7 to 8. And uh, I know Barb and John have a Monday night Bible study. Michael's got one going on Thursday, right? You want to say something about that? Right. So this Thursday, we're going to start our um, virtual and in person uh, Bible study on outreach. And as you've all heard me say a few times, that it's a little book. Um, it really is just a little book. So if you have thought you were afraid of it before, um, I don't think you have much to fear. So let me know if you would uh, like your copy today. Okay. That's one of the ways we can fellowship with each other perhaps is by discussing uh, on Zoom. Uh, while we can't necessarily meet in person or some people are uncomfortable meeting in person. Uh, so keep safe, be healthy. I got COVIDed yesterday for the first time. I didn't know <laughs> they're going to COVID me with a quick test. So uh, I tested negative, by the way, so I'm, right now I don't have the corona, so I hope I don't give it to anybody if I do. Any other announcements I'm missing? Uh, envelopes in the back, I forgot to announce that too, so the, for the new year. And Messiah Matters, I believe, right? Is that available yet? Yeah, okay, not yet. Okay, get either. So. All right, uh, Sunday school, uh, I got to set up for Sunday school. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God.